so much, Pastor, for allowing me to come and minister. Wow, it's so good to be back here and so thankful. I got my little hanky right here. I'm going to need that in just a little bit. But uh, it's just so good to be in the presence of the Lord and to hear all the wonderful things that God continues to do through Calvary Church. What a wonderful report. God bless you, brother. It's okay. You're falling in love with Jesus every day, I tell you. Just Come on, don't you just love Pastor Dan, man? We love you, man. And my wife and I get an opportunity of traveling, just sharing the wonderful good news of Jesus Christ. Just so you know, about several years ago now, four years ago, the Lord has shifted us in, in, in the ministry, and uh, my wife and I are so blessed and honored. We pastored the church for 18 years there in the inner city of Newark, New Jersey. It was our promised land. It was the land that we prayed over many, many days and weeks and months and years, and God gave us wonderful favor with God, with the people and the, and the community there. I mean, feeding the homeless. And I believe that, that that local church in Newark, New Jersey, we didn't have our hands out like this. We were resourcing and giving, hit over $100,000 in missions giving alone. Kids were on fire for Jesus. Now my wife and I have the honor of, of just traveling and seeing our sons and daughters that were raised up in the faith. And then not too long ago, the Lord said, it's time to go. And we said, no, Lord, like we were just getting started. And the Lord just moved us out. And, and my wife and I have five beautiful children. We just put one in college. Uh, she's a sophomore at Rutgers uh, there in New Brunswick on a band team. I mean, God is just so good. I went to her first game or whatever, and I was just like kind of like one of those parents. I was that guy. Um, there was a, they said, um, you know, hey, your kids are going to grow up and leave the house. And I was like on board celebrating like, go, Jesus, go. And then I realized that it was a trick of the enemy because they're more expensive outside of the house. Come on, somebody. Am I ministering to the body today? Just whatever. So take it. Take your time, okay? Um, but the Lord has been so faithful. Now my wife and I are, uh, we, the Lord laid it upon my heart, a ministry, Regenerate Ministries, that the Lord has called us to, to, to serve and to obviously lead. And I believe that God is raising up more evangelists and more missionaries than ever before. And we want to be on the front lines and allowing the Lord to do that through our life and ministry. So thank you so much for your partnership, Pastor. We do love and pray God's blessing and favor all over this house. Wonderful service we had this morning. Amen. Amen. See, some people are back for the second one. But I believe the Lord wants to speak a promise into our hearts today. The promises of God are so powerful even today. They never lose its power. Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain throughout all eternity. I want to bring you a message entitled, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. As we're going to look at the nation of Israel, the Israelites, like many of us today, are entering into a new season. A, a scripture verse that I've been pondering on my heart through this season in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 through 19, it says, forget about the former things. He says, do not dwell on the past. See, here's what God's, I'm doing a new thing. If we're going to step into what God is doing today, even good, bad, or indifferent, we must let go of things from our past. The Israelites had the great priests and prophet Moses over the house of God. They were entering to a season where a generation during their time in the wilderness as they were coming out of Egypt and God was leading them to inherit a place they've never been before. They've never seen before. They only heard it with their ears but they never experienced it and seen it with their eyes. There was a generation that grew up during that time that they didn't know really the Lord and they didn't know all the wonderful things God was doing, but he was allowing that first generation to pass away so a new generation could take place. The people of God never been in this direction before and they were gonna have to rely on the goodness of God to get them to wherever God was leading them to. And that's what I believe God is doing in our lives in this season. It's not like we used to do before. We want God to take control and to say, Lord, have your way. In the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse one through nine, Lord always brings me back to this book for a word of encouragement. Joshua, chapter one, verse one through nine, 
This is Moses' aid, and God was going to now use Joshua to lead about 600,000 or more people into the promised land. Here's what the Word of God says. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Verse 4, your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all of the Hittite country, that's the places of their enemies, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. This is still the promised land of God. Verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life, Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Here's the promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you're going to lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Do you remember that they entered the land not because of the faithfulness of themselves, but because of the faithfulness of God? That's encouraging to me that even when I blow it, God is still good. He says, be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Remember, God did not give us the Bible so that we could become smarter sinners. He gave us the Bible so that we can live it out, so that we can see the principles of God at root in our hearts and lives. Then you will be prosperous. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Hear the word of the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, oftentimes when God brings me back to this scripture verse, oftentimes it's getting me ready to enter into a new season that I've never been before. I heard this preacher once say, new levels, new devils. In this season in our lives, we must remember the God that says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Remember, the Israelites were going through the wilderness for 40 years. They seen the goodness of God. They, they witnessed the supernatural, but now it was time for them to cross over. As we're talking about this promise of God never leaving his people, the God that says, I'll never leave you, will be number one, the God that says, I'll lead you. I'll lead you. Scripture says again in verse number two to Joshua, he says, Joshua, get ready to cross over the Jordan River. Now notice, when God says to cross over, he didn't tell them how they were going to cross over. When God's bringing you to a new season, it's not going to be because you're smart or you're crafty. We must allow God to lead us because how we get to the other side, only God knows. We must trust him. See, the Israelites, they experienced God in the past. They saw the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. They understood when God was on the move that they were to now move only when the cloud was moving or the fire was moving. Bible says they would get to a new place. Now, surely the temple of God or the sanctuary of God was not made out of brick and mortar. It was a tent because they knew that our God was on the move. And wherever they went, they said, we cannot stay here because this, although may be a place of camping, it is not the place of the promise. Mm -mm -mm. See, you and I are just passing through this place, but we know that heaven is our final destination. Can I talk about heaven for a little bit? Amen. Heaven is still the promise for every single believer, but the Bible says God was on the move, and as the cloud moved, they moved. When the fire moved, they moved. When the fire stood still, they stood still. I believe that principle still remains today. May we never move if God's not moving before us. May we say, God, lead us by your spirit. But notice what he says to Joshua. He says, Joshua, 
Before you move, you gotta be ready. Before I move, you gotta be ready. Bible says, he says, get ready to cross over. Now, I'm an athlete, as you can tell. I played four years at Montclair State University, played basketball. As a matter of fact, one of my basketball teammates are here, and he's my teammate as I got older, and we have these men's, men's, men's league. I'm not, I'm not as swift as I used to be, so I have younger guys to help me look good. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but there was a sort of a, a, a move in sports called a crossover. It's a change in direction. And typically, I don't do crossovers a lot, but I do it when there's a defender in front of me that's stopping me from moving forward. I can't keep doing the same things I've been doing. I must get ready to shift and move in a new direction. See, I believe this with all of my heart that God is moving his church in a different direction, but under the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We must not rely on what God did in the past. We look back and say, God, you were good, but Lord, I want what you're doing now in my life. What we're getting ready to cross into, you've never been before. I mean, we're literally living in days we've never seen before. But just because we're living in days we've never seen before does not mean that God is not with us and that God is not good. God continues to lead his people by his spirit. The God that says, I'll never leave you, will be the God that says, I'll lead you. And the God that leads you will always be the God that blesses you. Does anybody need God's blessing today? Mm. One of the amazing promises of God not leaving you is that God promises Joshua, I will bless you. He says, Joshua, verse three, I will give you every place where you set your foot. You don't got to fear the direction that I'm leading you in because I'm the God that goes before you. And if I go before you, I will prepare every place to be a blessing unto you. It's an obedience. But I notice what he says. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. As I promised Moses. Now you remember Moses. Moses, this great man of God. Why would God choose those words? The great priest, here's why. Because Joshua understood this principle. He goes, I want to be next to the one that God is blessing I don't know if you understand this. Joshua stayed close to Moses. He did not leave Moses aside. When Moses would go into the tent to spend time with God, remember, when God was moving, Moses will stand on the outside of the tent. And when the man of God stood on the outside of the tent, everybody in this 600,000 people community will stand because they knew God was on the move. Joshua saw this. See, every man, great man and woman of God knows this is wisdom. Stick by people that God is blessing. I don't hate when people get blessed. I stick close to the people that are blessed by God because here's what it means. If God is blessing you, I know that God is in the neighborhood. Come on, somebody. I want to be next to people. I want to get alone. Okay, this is the man of God. Show me. And God used Moses to show young Joshua, this is how you ought to be a man of God. But Joshua also saw the downfall. Men of God are not perfect men. Women of God are not perfect women. But I will tell you this. Even through my mistakes, I've seen God's grace. Joshua stayed close to Moses. He said, as I promised Moses, although Moses, the servant of God, was dead, the promise of God was still alive. But the promise did not originate with Moses. The promise was before Moses to a man by the name of Abram or Abraham. Anybody remember Abraham? I got saved at 19, okay? 
So I didn't have the privilege of growing up in Sunday school and my first Bible or whatever. I, when I got saved, I got saved. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know no verses. And so the first song I ever heard, okay, don't judge me. The first song I ever heard as when I, when I became a follower of Jesus was the song Father Abraham. The song, you know Father Abraham? If you don't know it, no pressure, I'll teach you right now. <laughs> Father Abraham, oh, they're like, he's really doing it. Absolutely. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so I didn't even know who Abraham was. <laughs> I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just sing along, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. I mean, they t I mean, by the time you get out of that song, you were once 17 years old. You're now 85 and grown with children. <laughs> this song was so long. I'm like, who is this Abraham guy? Well, if you're like me, that's how we learn the Bible, even through song. In Genesis chapter 12, we meet a man by the name of Abraham. And you're going to watch how God used an individual and then through an individual built a nation. If God can use Abraham, God can use us. The Lord said to Abram, watch, notice, prerequisite. If God wants to use you, he will first separate you from you. <laughs> oh, we preach it. I wish I had my band up here. We preach them right now. When Jesus came into my life, some people left. I didn't tell them to leave. They just left on their own. People didn't have a problem with me. They had a problem with the one inside of me. He said, Abraham, I'm going to do something great in your life, but you got to get away from your family, from your people. You're like, wow, God, that's rude. No, it's not because his father was an idol worshiper. And God said, I want to be your father. And I'm going to show you how to be a strong man of God. Obey me and listen to me. I got great plans for your life. He said, I, I'm going to make you into a great nation. This is total opposite our culture today. God said, I will make you. Don't let the world make you. I'll make you into a great nation. And watch this. Here's how God's going to do it. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You don't got to be great on your own. And you will be a blessing. The reason why God wants to bless his people and his church is so that God can bless people through you, not just to you. What I love about this congregation, did you hear the report? How much? $19,000, something, something dollars and 46 cents. Why does God want to bless Calvary? Because God's desire is to bless people through Calvary. Yes. He said, I will bless those who bless you. If I had a different translation, it would say, I'm going to keep you out of jail. Don't worry about your enemies. I'll take care of them. Leave room for God's wrath. You just stay focused on me. I'll curse those who curse you. Watch this. Here's the gospel. Abraham... You don't know this, but all peoples on earth are going to be blessed through you. When God spoke this, he had nothing. But he had to take God by faith and move into what God was saying and doing what God has called him to do so that he can experience the blessing and favor of God. Thirdly, God's word says, not only will I bless you, he says, but I'll protect you. I'll protect you. Not everybody gets excited about the blessing and favor of God on your life. But with the blessing comes the protection. God's able to protect what he blesses. In Joshua 1.5, watch what he says. Before Joshua took a move, he says, Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you all the days 
of your life. I can go to the psalmist that wrote that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life as I dwell in the house of the Lord. There is nothing like the dwelling presence of God. He protects us. Do you know that Satan hates when people are blessed by God? Do you know like Satan does not like you and it's not because of you, it's because of who's inside of you? Do you know the moment you ask Christ to come in, you become, you're like an enemy to Satan. He does not like you. He doesn't like your marriage. He doesn't like your family. He doesn't like your children. He hates everything that is good and upright. But God's able to protect us. Bible says that while he was talking to Abraham in Genesis 15, chapter 1, Bible says after this, after the promise, comes God's presence. He said, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abraham. He goes, I am your shield, and I'm not talking about the little baby shields either. When these scriptures talk about a shield, man, aren't you thankful for the book of Psalm 90 and 91 that talks about dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty, that God is able to protect us? You say, how does God protect and reward? Really simple. When I became a follower of Jesus, I came into a covenant relationship with him. In order for a covenant to be established or a new covenant, the old had to be gone and the new had to come. It's in Jesus Christ. And that covenant was not brought about without the shedding of blood. When Jesus died on the cross for me, he took my past and said, I am removing your past. I'm giving you a new heart, a new mind. And when I asked him to come into my life, I didn't realize that I were coming into a covenant relationship. And now his blood is over the doorposts of my heart and my home. I am so thankful for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day and it will never lose its power. Oh, it's the blood of Jesus that washes over us. I'm so thankful I am blood washed today. There will come moments in your life well, the enemy will attack your home. God said, I'll be with you, but he also promises this, in this world you will have trouble. You will have trouble. There is a real enemy out there looking to destroy everything we're about. This is not a political issue, it's a biblical issue. And if you come into God's house today and if you are not aware, listen, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, be strong. He goes, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. He says, for we do not wage war against flesh and blood, but against principalities of things we have not yet seen. So as spirit-filled believers, we got to be ready to put on the armor. It's a spiritual battle we're in. My wife and I, get an opportunity, as I said, to travel to different places and everywhere we go, we just see God moving by his spirit. We were in one place a couple, few weeks ago where God is just healing people by his spirit, just healing people. One, one lady, I, I, I came like a year ago and she was in the front row, young girl, young girl. And I, I remember we were praying through some liver issues that she had. And I just saw her at the altar and I said, let's just see what Jesus is going to do. He's the healer. We prayed in faith. She went to the doctors three weeks later. I was already gone. She went to the doctors three weeks, three weeks later. They saw the report of her liver. They put it up there one side by side. And here's what the doctor said. I'm, hey, if you're a doctor here, praise God for our doctors and medical workers. I praise God for you. God's using you by his spirit. But I'm just giving you the report. Doctor put it up there and he says, um, what happened? He goes, that was last three weeks ago. This is today. He goes, either I made a big mistake or this was a big miracle. It's because my God's the healer. There's no doubt. Another area where a woman just came, she, just God touching and healing at the altar. So we love seeing what God's doing. I got a call. I'm from Brooklyn, y'all. Can't you tell? We built different in Brooklyn. So I got a call, and they were like, hey, would you be willing to come to the Bronx? Brooklyn, Bronx, we don't. You know what I mean? I go watch the Yankee game or whatever, but then I get out before dark time. That's, 
It's, if you're from the five boroughs, you understand. We don't cross boroughs. So whatever, I was like, you know what? I will cross it for Jesus. And it was an Indian congregation. I love India. I haven't been there in a couple years. So I felt like the Lord was saying, I am bringing India to you. You don't got to pay $3,700 or be on a flight for 15 hours. I said, oh, God, sign me up. I took the call. I said, I'm going, I'm going. They said, all right, Pastor, we can't wait for you to get here. It's a two-day conference. I said, come on, Jesus. You're going to work by your spirit. Totally God thing. So I get to the hotel or whatever. I'm kind of getting ready for the service. The pastor called me and says, hey, Pastor, um, can I pick you up? Can I send a driver to pick you up? I said, whoa, ho, ho. I go, no, nah, no need for that, Pastor. I'm good. I'm from Brooklyn. We, we good. We not, we're not high maintenance. We, we'll, we'll make a way. He goes, Pastor, you're the only pastor ever to have said that you don't need someone to pick you up from the hotel. I said, because we built different. He was like, okay, no problem. Got off the phone. I start driving. He said, but you're not going to find a parking spot. I said, oh, Jesus will. So I asked Jesus. I'm not joking. This is real. I'm driving. I said, oh, God. Please provide a spot. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, God provided the spot, but I forgot to tell him where to provide the spot. That spot opened up like 10 blocks away. I was like, oh, Jesus, you, you provide it. I get out of my car. Come on now, I'm getting out of my car. I, I, you know, I got to just, hey, I'm getting out. I get out of the car, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, please let my car be here by the time it gets back. I head to the church. I'm going 10 blocks. I'm telling you, don't look at anyone. Don't look up. Just walk to the church. I got my GPS on because I totally don't know where I'm going. I'm like that dude. I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is bad. I get to the church. No problem. We had the service. It was awesome. How do you know that light time and dark time look totally different in the city? So I totally forgot that. So I get, to, like, I'm not, I know where I'm parked at, but the pastor, he don't know. He's like, would you like a lift to your car? I go, pastor, come on, man. I got this. I'm from Brooklyn. He's like, all right, no problem. Go to so I'm, I'm walking back. I'm praying, oh, God, please let my car be there. I turned the corner. When you see your car there, no problem. It's not on them bricks or whatever. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I'm like, there's a God in heaven. I got out of there quick, fast. Unfortunately, there was a day two. So day two, I told my ministry leaders or my, my our prayer partners for our ministry, I said, you guys need to pray. I'm not scared, but I'm nervous. I'm not scared, but I'm nervous. I got there or whatever. The pastor called again. I was like, oh, man, here it is. Here's the moment. He was like, do you want us to pick you up this time? I was about to say yes. I'm being, I was about to pray, but I was like, pastor, we got this. He goes, all right, pastor, we'll see you in a bit. I said, I should have said yes. So anyway, I get out of the car. I'm driving. I'm driving my vehicle, right? This time, I learned how to pray. I said, Lord, I don't just want a spot. I want a spot right next to the church. Can you do this for us, Lord? God's like, surely I can. I get to the church. They're like, Pastor, you're not going to believe it. I go, I see the spot. They didn't have to put a cone out there. He goes, there's never a spot in front of the church. Boy, I went into that church praising God. Oh, God, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. If you did it for Moses, surely you could. I mean, I was all in worship. The pastor kind of tapped me on my shoulder. He said, hey, hey, come here. When the pastor taps you on the shoulder in the middle of a service, it's not good. Everybody say, it's not good. He tapped me. He says, come here, pastor. I see this look on his face. He goes, pastor, your car. I went, my car, my ministry vehicle. So, so someone took a bat, a sledgehammer, and everything else to my car. So I get out. That's the church. I'm not joking. That was the spot to be in. I come out of my, the church. It's light time. That's after service. I come out. and All the people are like, this never happened before. And I'm going, I start laughing, because what are you going to do? I'm like, <laughs> they're like, Pastor, are you okay? No, I'm really delusional right now. I can't believe this happened. So I start laughing, and they're going, Pastor, are you okay? And they looked at me, they go, Pastor, we understand if you're going to go. I went, go? I went, go? We don't go. We preach. He goes, Pastor, you're still going to preach? Yeah, we're going to preach. He goes, Pastor, we forgot to tell you that you're actually ministering to over 6,000 people all over India. I went, dude, you could have told me that day one. I understand that when the gospel is being preached, there are going to be times of resistance. The devil's not going to lay down so that people can get saved. So I did what every man did in this place. I said, who am I going to call? 
I got two options. Either I'm going to call my wife, which is not an option. <laughs> my wife's Puerto Rican, y'all. Okay? Hey, hey, pa. Yeah. But you don't call her with stuff like this. She'll freak out. Oh, my gosh. How much is that going to cost? What about me? What about me? <laughs> Second place, call the insurance. So I'm going, I'm going to call the insurance. I pick up my phone to try to call the insurance. While I'm literally dialing the number, okay? Now, now I'm, I'm dialing the number. Now, remember, God moved. Now I'm coming out of the glory, and now I'm in nighttime. I'm in nighttime. So now I'm like, oh, my gosh, yeah, my car. I don't even know if it can run. It's dark. It's bad. So I'm about to call the insurance company, and there was a guy watching online who go to that church, and he owns a body shop that's never been opened before. He said, Pastor, I'm never going to forget this. This is before I was like, I didn't even know what's up with the car. He's like, Pastor, I felt like it was God. Don't worry about nothing, Pastor. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, your car is going to be better than ever before. I got a shop. We're going to take care of everything, Pastor. You don't got to worry. Don't worry about calling the insurance. I went, okay. <laughs> he said, no deductible, no nothing. We're going to have you in and out of here. I go, who is this guy? So then, after I got that promise, I can call my wife. Yeah. Hey. So I called my wife. I said, honey, it's all about how you communicate. Honey, you're not going to believe what God did. You want the good news or the bad news? She goes, what? She goes, give me the bad news. All right, bad news is my car is broken. She goes, oh, my gosh, you got an accident? No. Someone put a hammer sledgehammer to our car. She goes, oh my gosh, uh, honey, don't freak out. You want the good news? Good news is someone at this church said that they're going to take care of everything. Now, mind you, I'm two hours away from home. I got no windows. I don't even know if it's going to work. So I said, honey, don't worry. I'll be home in a couple hours. She goes, hurry up, get home safe. I'm like, okay. My wheel was like this, y'all. Okay. I got no windows. I'm on a turnpike and it's starting to rain. Two hours away. But when you got the promise, you're not worried about the problem. You're rejoicing in the midst of the struggle because you see God's hand. Let me show you that next picture. You think it's a, this is real. So that's the guy. That's the owner. He couldn't believe how great the car turned out. It was so bad. That's the car. So he goes, Pastor, while you're here, would you be able to pray over my shop? I said, where my oil? <laughs> I took my anointing oil that was in my little car or whatever. I said, pa I got back up. I said, I want to anoint all your machines for Jesus. He was having a, his shop wasn't really open. It was open. His inaugural opening was in two weeks. I said, I, I want to anoint everything. I want to anoint your customers. I want to anoint your workers. How many of you know that we don't just need spirit-filled preachers? We need spirit-filled mechanics too. We need spirit-filled doctors and lawyers and teachers. Why? Because God wants to set his people in motion everywhere. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. But sometimes, maybe the reason why you went through what you went through was not for you. And I thought to myself, if I would have never went through that, I would have never met this brother. And sometimes God can use unfortunate circumstances to still produce, oh, come on, somebody. God, God, you say, God, I want my faith to grow. Be careful. The only way your faith can grow is if pressure is applied. It'd be weird for me to go to the gym and go, I just, you know, I want to get, oh, watch, my muscles are going to grow. But you never pick up a weight? <laughs> you never added resistance to your muscle? You're not going to grow. There are some times when you got to do some lifting. Why? Because God wants to build you stronger for his glory. God says, I'll protect you. I'll protect you. Maybe the team can come. God promises also, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. When you go through the fire, I'll be with you. When you go through hard seasons, I'll be with you. Listen to me. There's never a season where I'm alone. Oftentimes, I don't know how the enemy works in his whispers to you, but whenever I face something, the first question I ask is, God, where are you? 
God, where are you? That's, the, that's, that's just the way it works. But I've now turned it a little bit different. I go, God, you're here, but how are you going to work this out for your glory? How are you going to use this, God? How are you going to work this out? And I believe this. It's worked in my life that God will use every storm. Here's why. Because I get to tell about the testimony of God. I can look back and say, God, you were good there. You were good there. I can take a step back and go, God, you were with me there. You were with me there when my mom was in the hospital and they said she was dead. You blew life right back in her. I was there when you did it. God, I was there when you, when you healed and you raised my brother up from the dead after an overdose. Everybody thought he was gone, but you raised him back up again. I was there. Why is that important? But I can look back and say, God, if you did it before, you could do it again. You could do it again. What the enemy meant for evil, God is able to turn it around and still use it for our good. You say, why? Because he wants us to look more and more and more and more like Jesus. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. In other words, God was saying, Joshua, if I did it then, I could do it now. But I'm gonna do even greater things that you've never seen before yet. You and I have access to an incredible God. The promises of God does not have an expiration date. It is alive. God is able. Then lastly, God says, I will never leave you. Oh, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never leave you. You got a doctor's report? I will never leave you. You got issues in your life? I will never leave you. There's never a moment in a believer's life where we're separated from the goodness of God. I'll prove it to you. Bible says, neither depths nor heights, neither angels nor demons, neither anything in all creation can ever separate us from the love of God. Listen, I'm so thankful for the promise of heaven that even when I pass away, Bible says absent from the body in the presence of the Lord. I am never once all by myself ever. Even in death, I live. Woo. Our world, they're searching for real hope. And you and I have this hope that can only be found in Jesus. This same Jesus spoke to Mary at the death of Lazarus. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, Jesus triumphed over death, hell, and the grave. And that promise, that same resurrection power that rose Jesus from the dead, we quote it all the time, that same power lives in me. When God says, I'll never leave you, what was he saying? He said, I'll never abandon you. I'll never desert you. I'll never leave you. I'll never quit on you. I'll never depart from you. I'll never leave you behind. I'll never leave you high and dry. I won't turn my back on you. I won't cast you aside. I'll never give up on you. I'll never reject you. I'll never disown you. I'll never break up with you. I'll never leave you stranded. I'll never cast you aside. I'll never betray you. I'll never walk out on you. Even on your worst day, God says, I'm good. Even when you blow it, God says, I'm the redeemer. I'm the restore. I don't know about you. Maybe the devil's been beating you up all week long. Oftentimes what the enemy does, I'm just telling you this because he does it with me all the time. He whispers condemnation. God whispers grace, mercy. I understand this. We are all living in the tent of this body. I get it. But how many of us are bold enough in this room to say, enemy, I gotta let you go. 
you've stayed way too long. And how many of you are saying, this is a new season of God's promise, of God's whisper, of God's goodness, of God's healing, of God's grace, of His mercy. I need it today. Lord, don't just change my heart. God, I want a new heart. I want a new mind. Some of us have been left captive by the enemy for way too long. But today, it's time to be set free. God's saying it's time to cross over. Some of you in this place, you're watching online, some of you, the enemy's not wanting to let you go. But because of what Jesus did for me, he's gotta let me go. It's because of Jesus. By his death, I now live. Bible says one man died, became the savior of all. I put my faith and my trust in Jesus. We hope that you enjoyed today's service. Let's take a moment to talk about your next steps. If you made the decision to follow Jesus today, hey, we love to celebrate with you and help you on your journey. Simply text the word follower to 97000. You'll receive helpful resources on following Jesus. Once again, thank you for watching, but we love to see you in person next week.